Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again on this Saturday morning. If you haven't been here before, my name's Peter, you're watching Thailand Bound, and today I'm going to be reading out four viewers' stories. That's four stories that have been sent in to me by viewers, all true stories, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy these. Right, before I get into the stories today, I just want to say a, a big thank you to all the people who gave me some feedback. If you remember a few weeks ago, um, I'm always running out of stories, and some people wrote to me and said, instead of doing a 30-minute upload, why didn't you reduce it down to kind of five, ten minutes, one story a week then you won't run out of stories because I always tell three four five stories in one upload uh, and you might have noticed there is quite a few story channels have popped up over the last year I've been doing this for five years now and uh, that's what they do they read out one story it might last 10 minutes and then that's it for a few weeks and um, I'd actually explained at the time I, I'd rather do the 30 minutes because there's a lot of people who uh, they don't necessarily watch my videos these story videos but they listen to them so they might be out with a dog or in the gym or tinkering with a car and I think 30 minutes is a, a good length of time uh, for the story so for now I'm going to keep it at this length uh, again thank you for everything Everybody who gave me the feedback there was only one who gave me there's always one isn't there who gave me some negative feedback he basically said oh I don't believe it you know you should put out a poll and you need to prove it and I'm like no I don't need to prove anything you know uh, so I've had the feedback the masses have spoken as it were right okay let's get into the first of four stories it was 1990 I was 27 years old originally from the UK I had been living in Australia for about two years and I had recently met a Philippine lady who I was very much in love with. I had decided to go back home to the UK on my own for a short holiday and I had to have a stopover in Bangkok for one night. Now I wouldn't say I was naive as I have been with a lot of English slash Australian girls and was very confident chatting any girl up. But I'd never been to Thailand before. All I knew about it was that it was humid and the song One Night in Bangkok. And that was it. So the way on the way to the hotel from the airport was even an eye-opener traveling from the airport with the traffic and huge billboard signs and the smell of gas fumes. I thought, I'm not sure about this place. I arrived at this really posh hotel somewhere in Bangkok that didn't smell of smoke. My expe expectations of Bangkok went up a notch. I thought, this isn't too bad. The girls in the reception were really hot and dressed in nice long slits in their skirts, showing their perfect legs. It was morning when I arrived, so after having a shower, I decided to explore, and I did explore. I don't know where I went, but I ended up near some river with shacks everywhere and what looked like homeless people. I remember walking over a footbridge and there were children sleeping on pieces of cardboard, but no one begging for money, which was strange. I ended walking for a few I ended up walking for a few more hours and didn't know where I was, but ended up in the slums. The smell of sewerage was getting stronger, so I doubled back to the hotel and had a shower and thought what a dump Bangkok was. By this time, it was getting too late in the afternoon, so I had something to eat in the hotel and ventured out this time. I went the other way and I saw a pub called something like King's Pub or something and went on for a beer. It was basically full of drunken Australian expats. I asked them, what's the deal with the strip clubs and are they safe? They replied, yes, they are, but stick to the ones that are named with royalty like King, Queen, etc. Then I left and went down the road and ended up in Pat Pong. Wow. All these market stands selling really good fake t-shirts. I bought loads of them so I could give them to my friends back in the UK. I took all my shopping back to the hotel. I was so excited, I went back out again for some more shopping. But as I went back down the street, there was what I thought were discos open playing great music. There were hot girls asking me to go in, which I obliged. They were dancing in the middle of this bar on poles with numbers on every time I made eye contact with them, they would smile at me, then I would look away. I noticed these other Westerners with the dancing girls all sat next to them, except for me. I didn't want to be unfaithful to my Philippine girlfriend in Australia, so I thought, I'm doing a pretty good job here, but it got to the point I felt like a leper, so I decided to leave. Next thing, I saw a bar advertising ping pong shows. I had no idea what that was about, and as I enjoyed table tennis, I thought I would take a look. Soon as I walked into a pretty large venue with a stage, these girls came over to me and asked me if I was alone. 
I just said no, I'm with him as there was an Indian guy about my age sat there in this dark corner with a drink. I sat next to him and I asked him if he didn't mind me sitting there as I had not a clue what was going on. He obliged and told me what was going on. To say I was shocked what they do with ping pong balls was an understatement. There was an older western guy in the other corner who had about four girls sat with him cuddling up and mass massaging his ego. My new friend asked what did I think of the girls. I said a bit of alright. He then told me they were men. I said what like drag queens? He said no lady boys. I had never heard of the phrase. The phrase. I said how can you tell? He said it's not the Adam's apple but the size of their hands. That was new to me. This girl, well, I think it was a girl, came over and did a rude thing with her fist, closed and kept moving it up and down near her mouth, asking me if I want some of this. Honestly, I couldn't believe what was going on. Girls in my hometown of Manchester would never act like this. Then these girls came on stage, lay on their back with their legs all over the place and I could hear whistling. I said to my new friend, that's not coming from where I think it is, is it? He just smiled and said, you bet. Honestly, I was shocked with it all and I'm not a prude or anything, but man, I couldn't handle it. I mean, the internet wasn't around even if it was. I still would have not had enough research to know what was going on. Looking back, I suppose I was very naive back then and it almost seemed silly. But if you arrive in Bangkok for the first time on your own, it can be quite an eye-opener. So there you go, <laughs> just a short story there, just really a guy's experience when he first came to Thailand. I think a lot of people have had that same experience. All right, nothing more to say on that story, so let's jump straight into number two. I thought I would tell you about my first time in Thailand. You are correct, Thailand has an enchanting effect on us first-timers and leaves an indelible impression. In 2009, I was serving with the US Army in Afghanistan. It was my first tour of duty out of four and it would prove to be my most dangerous and harrowing one. At that time, we received a two-week leave for rest and relaxation during the tour of duty. Most soldiers opt to go home. However, the military would give you an airline ticket anywhere you wish to go in the world. So as a single guy with no significant obligations back in the States, a fellow soldier and I opted for Thailand. I did what little research I could do from a war zone back when the internet was still maturing. I created a decent itinerary for our trip. Let me tell you, going from a severely conservative Muslim war-torn country to a peaceful Buddhist country is a stark contrast, contrast to say the least. We navigated our way to the hotel and immediately found some alcohol at the 7-Eleven down the street. Needless to say, we had much pent-up stress and frustrations to let loose. My friend purchased a bottle of American whiskey and I got the what I was to learn is a favourite in Thailand is Johnny Walker Black. We finished those bottles poolside that evening before making our way out to Soy Cowboy. The night was blurry but eye-opening. We wandered down the soy, taking in the amazing lights and frenetic, frenetic activity. We suddenly came upon an elephant and couldn't believe it. However, that was child's play. We went into a bar that had lots of neon lights inside and was crowded. Now, for naive Westerners who had never been to Thailand, we were amazed by the liberal activities. We were sitting in the middle of the bar, we looked over and there was a guy at the end of the bar, head back and in ecstasy, and the back of the woman's head bobbing up and down in front of us where his waist was. We thought we were in an alternative universe. We made it to some other bars and at the end of the night we found ourselves in our hotel room with nice Thai ladies who gave us aerobic sessions. My lady was clearly new to the scene because she did not speak a bit of English and apparently the night before I was so drunk that speaking was optional. We continued to tour and enjoy Bangkok and later found ourselves in Phuket. Phuket was definitely more expensive even back then. One night we found ourselves talking to two Swedish girls it turned out to be a good night with some skinny dipping and water wrestling in the ocean, right in front of the main boulevard. The one thing that most Thais have a hard time competing with is a nice large Nordic bosom. That being said, the woman of Thailand was so much more down to earth, approachable, feminine and eager to please. After much touring, scuba diving etc, we found ourselves in Bangkok on the eve of our return to the war zone. 
I remember just walking through an area of establishments late at night and a girl who was cleaning up and closing down the shop called to me. She was young and cute and so nice. I stopped and talked. Next thing I know, we are doing aerobics in my hotel room. It was awesome. I didn't think it was a pay-for-play situation. However, as she was leaving and she was very shy and timid in asking, but she did ask for some money. In those days, a running joke I heard everywhere was no money, no honey. Well, that is true in every country I've ever lived. It just may not be so clearly agreed upon front and a divorce court may decide the fair market value of the trade. Very early the next morning, my friend and I found ourselves on the way to the airport. This was after the new subway to the airport had just been opened, and we used BTS slash subway to go to the airport and save some dollars. Once we got to our gates and were waiting, the picture of us two had to be so depressing. I was reeling inside the thought of going back to Afghanistan after such a relaxing and wonderful experience in such a laid-back and peaceful country was horrifying. One thing to know, it is likely that one would have much better time of things in Thailand without bringing a friend. My buddy limited my overall experience on that trip. He hated rice, Asian food, Asian women. He did not mention this to me prior. This limited my exploration of Thai food and most importantly, Thai ladies. That trip was left me with fond memories. I swore I would return and finally, in just a few short months, 15 years later, I will finally arrive back in Thailand. One day, a few short years, I plan to retire there. There you go. So, a uh, couple of things there. When he said about the Nordic ladies, uh, you know, they have uh, the bigger bosoms, as it were. Uh, that's not the case anymore, that they've got the, the, the uh, ace up the sleeve. Uh, because all the Thai ladies who are working in the bars, and most of them now, they have the... Um, the operation so they're just as full as any uh, you know just as large as any western woman these days uh, but on the second point i want to raise he's he's right you know a lot of guys come here for the first time in a group or two or three guys and what they find is they're actually restricted because people have different uh, most of the time, most guys have got different things they like to do. Like this guy in this story, he didn't like Asian food. Uh, he wasn't a big fan of Asia, but the other guy was. And, and I've heard this a lot of times where guys come back a second time on their own and they have much more fun. So if you're thinking of coming here, but the only thing that's putting you off is you haven't got anybody to come here with, don't let that put you off because that's actually a bonus. And especially if you go to a place like Pattaya, you, you're only alone in Thailand if you want to be alone. That's a famous saying here and it's absolutely true. Right, let's get into story number three. At 28 years old, I first arrived in Thailand in December 2018. It was my first trip with my two friends who had paid for me to go last minute as they had already booked up. Having just come out of a long-term toxic relationship, I fell on hard times. They could see that I was fed up with life and had no zest left in me. They wanted to show me the world was bigger than our hometown and there was plenty of, to live for. The day came when we finally landed in Bangkok and headed into the Sukhumvit area. I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking of white sandy beaches and clear blue water like the Google images showed me when I researched it two days before our departure. Mind you, those images were off Phuket, Krabi and other islands. I was looking forward to having a real good time with my two friends, but little did I know I would be spending 10 days in Pattaya. I had heard the stories about the girls all looking for money and potentially a visa. I just laughed it off, thinking, surely they aren't all like that. Maybe there is a good egg in there somewhere. Before leaving for Thailand, people in my hometown asked me if that you are off to find a Thai wife. The thought had crossed my mind as a friend back home has a Thai wife. He married young at 21. He went on holiday after a failed relationship. He fell in love with the receptionist at the hotel he was staying in. Lovely woman. He brought her back to the UK and the, have a li they have a little daughter now. His Thai wife does everything, cooks, cleans and takes care of all three of them. She never ever complains about the work, which unfortunately I cannot say about most Western women. Upon arriving in Sukhumvit, we checked into a hotel which is located on Soy 11. My friends have visited Thailand several times in the past, so they knew to take me to Nana Plaza. Walking into Nana Plaza reminded me of the first time I walked into an arcade at the seaside when I, was young, when I was a young boy. The excitement of entering was the same. Pure excitement came over me as I looked around. The bustling nightlife was all around me. I'd never experienced anything like this in my life. 
Welcome, welcome. Hello, handsome man. Where you go? It made me laugh as I continued walking. I couldn't understand it why all of these girls were smiling at me. Do they want a visa to come to my country like everybody back home said they would? I later discovered that this is a stigma as these girls are working here purely for money. Most of them love their own country and have no desire to leave. Eventually, one of my friends said, right, it's time to let this guy see what goes on here. And they took me into my first go-go bar. After my eyes had adjusted to the light, I was amazed to see about a dozen beautiful girls dancing on a stage and wearing nothing more than bikinis. I was dreaming for a minute, then realised it was all real. One of the girls left the stage and as she walked past me, she said, Hello, handsome man, and smiled. I was sitting chatting with my two friends. I said, I can't believe this place. This is crazy. I couldn't help thinking to myself, why hadn't I visited Thailand sooner? This place is great, and the best thing about it was, I was only two hours into a ten-day holiday. I felt a tap on my shoulder. Hello, said the gorgeous five-foot-two stunner, with the brightest smile and the whitest teeth you could imagine. Her dark skin tone was a cherry on the cake for me. She was absolutely beautiful. How could I resist? She told me her name was A, and asked me where I came from, to which I replied, Scotland. A said, I like Scotland. You come holiday? How long you stay in Thailand? First time you come my country and very stupidly I said yes. It's my first time I've visited Thailand. A immediately comes out with, you want I show you around? I thought, why not? I wouldn't mind going for a game of pool with her and I had seen a bar with a pool table just outside Nana Plaza. My friends hadn't explained anything to me about how the bars worked or the bar find system and I couldn't really ask them at this point as they were both in full party mood with new friends of their own. I asked her, what time do you finish work? She said, I work very late but I can leave the bar early if you pay for my bar fine. I asked her how it works and how much it was. She explained it's 5,000 baht which would cover her salary and compensate the bar for losing her for the rest of the evening. Quickly, working out the exchange rate in my head, I worked out that it was peanuts really and I was on holiday for a good time. So that was that. I paid the 5,000 baht to go off and play some pool which I was looking forward to. I got changed and we left the gogo bar together. A and myself had a brilliant evening playing pool and getting smashed on shooters. We eventually end up in my hotel together, but I was too drunk for any aerobics, but made up for it in the morning. A fell asleep again, and as I looked at her laying there, I once again thought to myself, she's absolutely stunning. She's also a nice girl. I enjoyed her company last night. I thought to myself, if she wants to hang around a while longer and go for some food with me, I wouldn't have a problem with that, and I actually hoped that she wasn't in a hurry to run off someplace else. I was coming out the shower when I heard a yawn. Good morning, Tilak. Are you okay? I'm fine. A little tender from all the shots, but I'm okay, I said laughing. I can't remember getting back home, I said. A says, I bring you back because you mal too much. I replied, what's mal? Drunk, she replied. I just laughed. I then said, do you want to do something with me today? She replied, A can do whatever you want to, Tilak, but first you have to pay me 10,000 baht. I was confused. 10,000 baht for what? You told me 5,000 baht and I paid it to you last night. A then said, that wasn't for me. That was for the bar. You have to pay me 10,000 baht for taking care of you last night. By this point, she had raised her voice and is getting agitated. I tried to reason with her, but she just wouldn't have it. I gave her another 2,000 baht and said, look, that 7,000 baht I've given you in total, that should be enough. She then screams at me. No, you have to give me 10,000 baht or I'll call my brother. He's Thai Mafia. Wow, I thought. What have I got myself into here? I shoved the 2,000 baht into A's hand and I said, That's all you're getting. Call who you want. When, at that point, there was a knock at the door, it was my friend Gary. Gary said, Come on, hurry up, we have a taxi book for Patia. It will be here in 10 minutes. I thought, you'd be up and dressed already. I said, no worries, give me a minute, I'll be right there. A wasn't done yet. She started picking up the hotel brochures and throwing them around the room and was shouting at me. You no go now, I call my brother, you have to pay. By this point, I was getting stressed out and just wanted to leave. 
I just paid her the rest of what she was asking for and asked her to leave. The only thing I was thinking was how much had I given her in my own money and did I have enough left for the rest of my holiday? As soon as she had the cash off me, she changed back to how she was the night before. The next thing to come out of her mouth was totally unbelievable. She said, I don't want to go. I want to stay with you, with you and take care. I said, no, I'm sorry, that's not possible. I'm leaving for Patia in 10 minutes with my two friends. Then she says, okay, I come Patia with you, take care of you 10 days. No, I said, I'm not paying you again. I don't have much money left only have money for holiday. She says, it's okay, Tilak. Two people can sleep together, one room. You buy me food, we okay, no problem. Thinking about this offer and thinking maybe I can get to know her better, I agreed she could join us. To cut a long story short, we actually had a fantastic time in Pattaya together, seeing the sights, partying every night and getting drunk together. It was great fun, but now it was time to go home. I was sad I had fallen for A and she was with me, apparently. I later learned A was from Nakon Sakon and had a son that her mother took care of. She had come to Bangkok to provide for her family and extended family, grandmother, grandfather, etc., as they were all very, very poor. I don't think A realised that I wasn't exactly rich either. I was working for minimum salary in a very labour-intensive job. I asked A, where do you want me to drop you off in Bangkok? She replied, I come airport with you, Tilak. You my boyfriend now. My friends looked at me as if to say, what an idiot. I said to her, okay, that's fine. If you want to come to the airport, you can. We can have a meal before I leave. When I was back home, A was calling me every day. Actually, some days, every hour. I was missing Thailand now, or was I missing A? I booked a second trip alone on Boxing Day and sent a screenshot of the ticket to A. My holiday was for 18 days. That is the maximum time I could take off work. I sent her a message with this scan that said, I miss you and I'll be there soon. But I didn't hear back from her for over two days. When she did finally reply, she said, I broke my phone, but it works now. When you come here to Thailand, I told her April 15th, I will land early in the morning. A says, okay, I wait you. Can go see Ko Chang, you want? Okay, I said, not knowing where Ko Chang was. After doing a quick Google search, I found a beach resort and booked it for two weeks as I was going to Pattaya for a few days to catch up with friends anyway. The day finally came when it was time to head to the airport and back to the land of smiles. As soon as I arrived in Bangkok, I jumped in a taxi and made my way back to the same hotel. After a quick shower and a change of clothes, I headed out to Nana Plaza and back to the Gogo Bar where I had met A. She was on stage dancing as soon as she spotted me walking through the door. She jumped off the stage, ran over to me, threw her arms around me and said, Hello Tilak, I miss you. I'm happy to see you again. I said to her, Why are you working tonight? You promised you'd meet me at the airport. To which A replied, I'm sorry Tilak, I have to work, make money tonight. I can see you tomorrow. I said, No, you're coming with me tonight. I will pay the bar. This made her smile. She said, OK Tilak, you go. Okay, I said, we're okay to Ko Chang tomorrow, remember? Okay, she said, how many days? 14, I said. I have to go to Patty to see friend. Okay, she said, as she's pressing buttons on her mobile phone. You need to pay me this much, Tilak. I looked at the digits on her phone. 180,000 baht, you pay for me, bar, then I can go Ko Chang. No, I said, I'm not paying anything. I told you before, if boyfriend and girlfriend, I don't pay. I paid for the hotel already and the food. If you don't want to come with me, that's fine. I'll go alone. After my outburst, A soon changed her tune. She said, no, Tilak, it's okay. You boyfriend me. You pay only 20,000 baht. It's okay for you? Then she said, 20,000 baht for bar, not for me. Just pay food and tip me, okay? That's more realistic for two weeks, I thought. So off we go. We had a fantastic trip. Felt like I was on a honeymoon every day. I was falling for A more and more and she was for me, in brackets, apparently. Before I knew it, the holiday was up and we were heading back to Bangkok, so I, I thought I could catch my flight and head home. You come back for me again, Tilak? You go home, save money, can marry me, take me Scotland, okay? Tilak, I know butterfly, come back for me. Of course, I said. I say, remembering it's okay to dance and drink, but don't go with customer. You have boyfriend now. No problem, she said. I wait you, sure. 
I smiled back at A and caught my flight back to Scotland. Sad and depressed back home and missing A, I scrimped and saved and booked another trip to Thailand the following year. Then the pandemic, the pandemic hit. We used to talk every other day, then I lost interest. Sometimes I can't be bothered because I eventually woke up and realised I am one of many. As the saying goes, it's not your girl, just your turn. I've realised I have been naive to think A was actually my girlfriend. Thinking about it, she must have had several guys like me coming to Thailand on holiday and thinking that she was their exclusive girlfriend. I finally told A that I knew what she was about and I didn't want to have anything more to do with her. She went absolutely crazy on the phone and told me if I come back to Thailand, she will have me done in or put in jail on some trumped up charge for a long time. Some Thai bar girls are really crazy. You have to be careful. I've now deleted her off my Facebook and other social media pages. I'm planning another trip back to Thailand when everything is back to normal. My friend said that I'm crazy because if she sees me, she will try to set me up somehow. I have told them I will go straight to Pattaya, not Bangkok, but they seem to think that all the bar girls are connected and she will find out where I am. I love Thailand and I'm not going to miss out on another trip just because of A's threats. I'll play it by ear, but I've now learnt my lesson. I'm, I'm a much wiser man. Yeah, he probably is. So this happens a lot to guys on their first trip to Thailand. Biggest mistake you can ever make. If you go into a bar or a go-go bar and a girl says... She's, she's basically got a set of questions which will tell her your financial position and what you can do for her because she's firstly asked you, is it your first time to Thailand? So if you say yes, she knows you know nothing. You're completely naive. So that's that's a tick for her, right? Secondly, how long you stay here. So she's got a time frame of potentially how long she can make money out of you. And you might even take her out of the bar and stay with her for the whole holiday. So she's got two bits of ammunition there. And then she's asking, uh, she's asking, is it your first time to Thailand? How long are you staying here? And, and the other questions that went along with that, I won't go through them all, but basically it's a script to find out. So if, if you ever do come here for the first time, uh, you know, don't don't BS and say, no, I've been here for 30 years because they'll expect you to speak Thai. But you can say, no, it's my, not my first time. How many times have we been here before? I, I've been here several times. I like it. How long are you going to stay here? I don't know. If I'm having a good time, I might stay longer than I'd planned. Uh, and that's good enough. You don't have to say anything more than that. Right. OK, story number four. Let's get on with it. At the age of 30, I upped and left my boring single life in the UK for a year of backpacking and exploring Southeast Asia. This story happened when I was about four months into my trip. I had already visited Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam for a month in each country. Whilst passing through Bangkok for the third time on this trip, I was planning to be there three nights before making my way down to the Thai islands in the south. On the first night, I went out to a few bars with a guy I'd met in Vietnam a few weeks prior. He had not been to Bangkok before and I was keen to see some sights. After days of visiting the Grand Palace and Wat Po, we found ourselves on the Khao San Road having a few beers in the bars there and ended up in a nightclub, nightclub called The Club. Full of backpackers and young trendy types, the beers were flowing and we were having a great night. There were a lot of local girls in this club along with young western backpackers. There was a good vibe, loud dance music and it was very busy. Everyone looked to be having fun. I was having a cigarette in one of those glass door cordon off areas when you could, where you can smoke. I got chatting to one of the Thai girls who was with three other friends all in their 20s and very attractive. Most were a little shy at speaking to a farang but the girl I got chatting to was confident and friendly. Her English was pretty much perfect and we chain smoked a couple more cigarettes before going to the bar and getting another drink. It was all smiles and I sensed an obvious connection between us. Over the last four months I had only ever met western girls from Canada, Australia and Europe who were also backpacking so to converse with a Thai girl who spoke very good English was a refreshing change. The friend I was with just warned me to be careful as she was maybe a working girl pickpocket or a scammer. I was naturally quite curious, as you should be with a stranger. Having my wits about me, and I wasn't too drunk. Her flirting and talking was great, and the conversation flowed naturally. We all had a dance together and carried on drinking shots until the club shut. I asked her what her plans were when we were out on the street, and she made it obvious that she wanted to come home with me and asked where I was staying. She said goodbye to her friends and we walked back to my little guest house which was within walking distance from the Khao San Road. 
We were walking hand in hand together, grabbing some street food on the way. I decided to test the water with her status and said, damn, I only have 700 baht left, to which she replied, that's fine, you don't need any money, which put my mind at rest. When we got back to the guest house, the night porter started talking loudly to the girl and she handed over her ID. The conversation got a little heated and she handed over 500 baht to him. When we got to the room, I asked what happened in the reception when voices were raised. She said, the security said that local girls are not allowed to stay here unless they pay the hotel's joiner charge and we treat all you working girls the same. That made her very angry as she shouted at him, saying she was not a bar girl and in fact she was an English teacher. Now I know why her English is so good. I immediately said I will give her the 500 baht back. She replied with a smile, no way. I will pay this time. How about you pay tomorrow, right? I thought that's a good sign. I thought this was very honest of her and we continued to have a great night together. In the morning, I was quite hungover. We arranged to see each other over the next evening for food and some drinks again. I honestly didn't think she would turn up the next day. But sure enough, after a lazy day of getting some washing done, checking emails and some shopping, she turned up at the restaurant area of my guest house and unbelievably, she was on time. I was a little taken back but had a quick shower and got changed and ready to go with her. We, want, we went out for some Indian food. She paid for the whole meal and now was 100% convinced she was genuine with no hidden agenda. I insisted I pay for the rest of the night. We hit a couple of bars and shared a few cocktails then headed back to my guest house again. The same security guard was at reception and gave us a dirty look as we walked in. I paid him the 500 baht and walked up the stairs without saying anything. We had another great night of bedroom gymnastics and fell asleep in each other's arms until morning. We parted ways in the morning, exchanging Facebook names and left with all smiles. What a fun couple of days it had been, with no orchid or any mention of money being exchanged. The next day, I flew down to Krabi and continued on my trip. We never saw each other again, but kept in touch via Facebook. I saw her on pro her profile that she was previously married to an English guy, but now divorced, and it was plain to me that she only liked Western men. This assured me that she had a professional career and that simply Western men were her type. When I visited Thailand now, I preach that you can meet genuine Thai girls. Not every one of them is a money grabber or a working girl out to fleece you. We occasionally keep in touch now and it's around 10 years later messaging a few times a year to catch up and laugh about the time we spent together. She is now with a European man and they look to be very happy together. I'm now married off with kids but fondly remember my little fling with my genuine Thai girl. And again, he's, he's absolutely right. You know, a lot of people come here and assume that it's only working girls here in Thailand and you can't find a decent girl. There are girls here, especially if you're a younger guy, you know, if you're anywhere between kind of 24, 30, uh, you know, even, even a bit older. There are, there are girls here in Thailand who go out and they just want to have fun and they want to meet Western guys. And one of those places uh, that you can meet those sort of girls, if you're a younger guy especially, is Carlson Road. You know, typically it was a, uh, a backpacker area in the 60s and 70s. It's kind of very, very competitive commercialized now but it's still a kind of younger person's uh, destination and there are there are a lot of genuine Thai girls who, who just want to go out and drink dance maybe meet a western guy for a bit of fun and that's obviously what's happened in in this particular story uh, so it's wrong to paint everybody with the wrong brush and think they're all out there looking for money and even if you're an older guy you know it is possible to come here uh, go on one of the dating apps like uh, tinder or uh, you know any any of the Thai dating apps and you'll get hits you've just got to sift through you know there's a lot of lady boys on there there's a lot of scammers and people just looking for money cryptocurrency scams all that sort of thing uh, but you can find uh, you know you can find one or two good ones in there you just got to really really be careful okay that's it for another week uh, there'll be more stories next week uh, if you're sitting on a story send it in i'll change names make it anonymous and uh, you can hear it read out right here on thailand bound but once again thanks for watching and i'll be back next saturday with some more stories